Prime Minister has acknowledged that we are some way from a resolution with the EU in reaching agreement on a Brexit deal. So are the proposals he put forward yesterday workable? Joining us from Westminster, Ash Sharker, who is a contributing editor at Navora Media, and Tom Harwood, a reporter for Guido Fawkes. Ash, to you first of all. Um, will we have a deal by the 31st of October? Well, it's a very, very tight window indeed to both go over the detail of Boris Johnson's proposal. Um, the letter that he sent yesterday to Jean-Claude Juncker was still light on some of the specifics, which have caused so much consternation, like this issue of customs checks along the border on the island of Ireland. Also, this matter of the DUP having an effective veto over this, I can't believe it's not the backstop, post-transition arrangement. And there's, you know, not much time left until uh, the next EU summit in which everyone was hoping to have this deal done and dusted by. So I think it looks unlikely that we will have left the EU with a deal by October the 31st. But of course, all things are possible with both political will and compromise. The most important uh, um, party here who would need to compromise are the EU. They will only do so if there are positive noises coming from the Irish government. And so far, those positive noises haven't really been heard. Varadkar said that um, this proposal fails sh falls short in many ways of the original backstop idea that was in Theresa May's withdrawal agreement. And his deputy prime minister was even more scathing of the proposal. So a long way to go yet. Tom? Everyone does. The European Union are getting very tired of the UK continuing to have this constitutional wrangling getting in the way of the project that they uh, want to pursue. It's, it's right that this comes to a conclusion. It's right that we get Brexit done. And in order for that to happen, the EU are going to have to move. The Prime Minister has made an incredibly generous, open, big, comprehensive offer to them in the form of this new deal. And actually, we haven't heard the sort of scathing response that Theresa May, for example, heard back at the Sol Salzburg summit last year. There is tentative positive feeling towards this. And I think it really hangs in the balance. Unfortunately, uh, the way that Parliament has acted and, and the, the passage of things such as the Surrender Act make it a lot harder to, make, to get that deal done because many in the EU don't believe that the UK government can now leave with no deal at the end of the month. I think the government's determined to prove them wrong and it's really touch and go as to whether they accept this but everything remains on the table and I'm, I'm for, for one feeling quite positive about the lack of sort of a big obstinate response such as we heard with Theresa May. Ironically, Boris Johnson, who'd have thought it? He's turned out to be much more of a diplomat in the way that he has proposed uh, this, this new deal uh, than Theresa May ever was. Mm. Ash, uh, I mean, the, the uh, Irish at this stage don't look as though uh, they're particularly confident that this will be able to go through in time. And so that's the thing. In terms of the things which aren't in this proposal, Tom keeps using the word deal. It's not a deal because it's not been agreed by all parties. There's still so much that needs to be fleshed out. So you've got this issue of the buffer zone in which over 600,000 people already live. And there's not much of a sense of just what the physical infrastructure along that buffer zone might look like. In the letter, you talk, um, Boris Johnson talked about there might be a need for a small number of physical checks, but it would be some way away from where the border actually is. Today in Parliament, he was talking about no physical checks whatsoever. So that lack of clarity will make it very difficult, I think, for the Irish government government to unequivocally say, yes, this is great, we want to go for it. And one of the things that I want to say about the role of Parliament here is that the role of Parliament is not to acquiesce to whatever the government wants to do. It's to scrutinise the government. It's to legislate and to hold the government to account. I'm quite pleased that Boris Johnson has magically adopted this more conciliatory tone. I don't think, however, it will last very long. If you look at what's been leaked to BuzzFeed just today. Tory MPs have been instructed to call the EU crazy if they reject this proposal. So I don't think that this is, you know, a new 
Boris Johnson, who suddenly discovered the power of diplomacy, I think this might be yet another act from a political shapeshifter. And Tom, uh, 31st, I like that phrase. Uh, Tom, 31st of October, if we're still part of the European Union, uh, will our diplomatic um, Prime Minister have to resign? Well, I think as long as uh, Boris Johnson is Prime Minister, we will leave on the 31st of October. And I know there's been an enumerate, like a, a, a huge does amount the ben Act of mean discussion that he can't, around how. Sorry, Tom, to interrupt, but doesn't, doesn't the yeah. Ben Act mean that, that that can't happen? Necessarily. Now, number 10 are determined to say that they can, and, and there has been a lot of discussion in terms of ways that that um, act that was, remember, passed so quickly without the scrutiny that we normally see for legislation. It was whisked through the House of Lords, which is normally a revising chamber. It was passed in the course of a day when these things normally take weeks and months. This is a legislation that does, a piece of legislation that does have holes in it, and number 10 are determined that they can still leave without a deal despite it. Now, whether the EU believe them or not is another question. So it ultimately does make it harder to get that deal, but not impossible. And number 10 are absolutely adamant that they will leave at the end of October. And there are okay. a number of ways that have been discussed that that can happen. Don't do the politician thing on me, Tom. I know you too well. Answer my question, if you wouldn't mind. If we don't leave on the 31st of October, will he resign? Well, I mean, it sort of depends what happens, because there are so many different branching paths of history in that effect. We, we heard um, talk last week that uh, there might be new legislation giving unprecedented power to the Speaker to send a letter. You know, if that happens and the Prime Minister is still Prime Minister, I think he would remain Prime Minister and not resign if he, he, if he himself doesn't send that letter. Ultimately, what everyone wants now is a general election because this Parliament is so rotten and, and it's so far away from the promises on which it stood at the last election. It's right that that's refreshed and ultimately Ultimately, that will happen uh, in, in, in a matter of uh, weeks or months. It's unlikely that this will stretch on beyond Christmas. So if Parliament find a way to get an extension, I still think that's less likely than likely. But if they find a way to get an extension through, then ultimately there's going to be an election. Boris Johnson has an 11-point lead in the polls in the most recent poll. Okay. And, uh, and it's likely that a Tory majority would be determined. We'd find ourselves exactly where we are now and we'd leave with this deal because okay. the EU would know that we'd be leaving with no deal if it didn't. OK, Ash, everybody wants a, a general election. I'm not sure that's necessarily true despite Tom having said yeah. it. You know what, I'm chomping at the bit for a general election. I absolutely can't wait. And one of the reasons why I can't wait is because this discussion of Brexit just sucks the oxygen out of the room. And we hear so much about these burning injustices that need addressing in our society, like public service cuts, like the climate crisis, like wealth inequality. And both in Parliament and also in political media, we don't get adequate space to talk about these issues affecting society. Now, in a general election campaign, that all changes. The the Labour position is that they're not going to go for a general election and it is uh, realistically in Labour's power, not in the government's power, to decide when that happens until no deal has been taken off the table completely because the Labour position is that it would hit those on the lowest incomes hardest, which is why they won't countenance it. So actually, you've, you know, what I find sort of funny about, you know, Tom is that he presents the government as both being very strong and Superman-like but also incredibly weak at the same time. The fact is, is that when Boris Johnson torpedoed his own majority, he gave up the power to set the agenda in okay. a meaningful way between now and a general election. OK, we're out of time, but Tom, we started with Ash, so we must finish with you. Not Superman, more Incredible Hulk, I believe, but final thought from you? Well, I think it's just so just mentioning those Tory MPs who uh, voted against the government in what was a, in effect a confidence matter. I think they're all thinking they're, they're, they're feeling very sheepish now okay. because the government is so determined to get a deal. They've made that harder. They're probably going to be more responsible for no deal if it happens than okay. anyone else. Good. And ultimately, in order to get that good deal, we have to unite behind the prime minister. OK, lovely to have you both on my final show. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.